With the level of theft of camper vans always a concern, in this video we'll take a look at the pros and cons of vehicle trackers and an example of how to set up and install one. So keep watching. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything camper van and motorhome related, from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up. It really does help me to know what you like, and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos, please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I know what you didn't like. With reports of camper van thefts on the increase, stopping a potential thief isn't about making your van impenetrable, as that's impossible. If they really want it, they'll find a way to take it. What you can do is make your van less appealing than the one around the corner. Anything that makes it slightly more difficult or risky to steal is a good thing. Thieves want an easy life and there are plenty of vans to pick from. Multi-layer protection like disc locks, pedal boxes, isolation switches, immobilizers, alarms, trackers and CCTV as well as being aware of where you park can only make it less likely that someone will try to steal it. We talked about various layers of security in our previous video linked up here and in the video notes but let's take a look in more detail specifically at vehicle trackers. I'm not going to talk specifically about the type of tracker that we have or how it's fitted as that would be a security risk for us. But we will look at the various types of trackers that are available and then at the setup and installation of an off the shelf self fit tracker. Put simply, a tracker is a piece of equipment in your van that receives signals from GPS satellites which allow them to work out exactly where on earth they are. This information can then be sent over the mobile phone network either by text message or by data service. Some professionally fitted trackers also send out a radio frequency signal that can be picked up by a receiver fitted in some police vehicles once it's been activated when the vehicle is reported missing. Because all these signals are radio waves they're at risk of being blocked or jammed which is why it's not a good idea to solely rely on a tracker as your only means of theft deterrent. If we look at professionally fitted trackers first, some insurance companies will insist on having one of these fitted on certain vehicles. They're generally Thatcham approved and if not mandatory may get you a discount on your insurance. As they're usually monitored 24-7 by a company, some have agreements for a priority police response. Those with multiple communication methods can make it harder for all the signals to be blocked or jammed. However, they can be expensive when you factor in the system cost, installation cost and the ongoing monitoring cost. And even then, they're not guaranteed for your vehicle to be recovered. There are loads of different trackers on the market that can be DIY fitted. They are unlikely to be Thatcham approved and therefore meet insurance company requirements. You won't get a priority police response. Usually they are easier to jam, meaning you have less chance of it being recovered. Most you will have to monitor yourself, so if you're on holiday, your phone's switched off, it may be some time before you even know your van's gone missing, you will then have to contact the police yourself and liaise with them to let them know the position. On the positive side, they are cheap to buy, can be easy to fit, and they are far better than nothing. Let's take a closer look at some. You can get ones that just plug into your OBD2 port. For me, this is the first place a thief would look and simply pull it out and throw it out the window so it wouldn't be my choice. Slightly better are ones that are discreet because they are disguised and can be hidden in plain view. You would need to be conscious that your cigarette lighter socket was permanently live for this one that plugs into the cigarette lighter socket and looks like a USB socket. Next, you've got wired in and easily hidden black boxes that may or may not be disguised as something else. If I were picking one, something along these lines would be my choice. Before we take a look at one, let's look at the range of features you can expect to get on DIY trackers. They range from super simple to more advanced. Features you can look for include different methods of communicating. So getting back that current location. This could be calling or texting, or you might be able to track it by the browser on a computer or a smartphone app. 
smartphone apps usually allow you to get alerts to get notifications if your vehicle moves out of certain areas or goes over a certain speed or the ignition is switched on. If you're thinking just disconnecting the van's battery is an easy way to stop the vehicle being located, a lot of trackers have a backup battery that will keep them running for some time after the vehicle battery is disconnected. It may even send you a notification or text message to let you know that the battery has been disconnected. A simple shock or movement sensor can alert you early of an attempted theft, and some trackers have an interface to attach an SOS button or your alarm system to give you extra protection alerting you when your alarm's going off. If your vehicle is stolen, some trackers allow you to fit a switch that can be activated remotely to disable the vehicle, and some will allow you to call the tracker and listen in to what is being said in the vehicle. When choosing a DIY fit tracker, you should consider what subscription is necessary to keep it working. Some come with a built-in SIM card and the subscription covers all data charges and the tracking platform. Others may have free access to their platform, but you need to put your own SIM card in and pay the data charges. There are some that you may have to put your own SIM in, but they only give you a limited time of free access to their tracking platform, after which you have to pay a monthly or annual fee. The tracker may continue to work with basic features like text messaging, but for the more advanced features like tracking by smartphone app or recording travel history, you have to continue your subscription, so watch out for this. Now let's take a look at a simple DIY tracker and what's involved in setting it up. I picked this basic but neat little unit up from eBay for under £20. The first thing we need to do is add a suitable SIM card. I've chosen a gift gaff SIM for this device, which is pay as you go and £10 of credit will last 6 to 12 months, depending on how much you use your vehicle and how often you track it. There are two main ways to communicate with the tracker. The simplest but most basic is by text message. For this, you can usually use any network SIM card. For more advanced features, the tracker needs to be able to send data over the mobile network, and most use the General Packet Radio Service, or GPRS. This is a 2G mobile platform technology. For sending small amounts of data, it's perfect for GPS trackers, as the 2G network covers more of the country than 3G or 4G. Think of the place is you can make a phone call but not browse the internet on your phone. Something to bear in mind is that the 3 network doesn't have 2G, so trackers that use GPRS won't work with a 3 SIM card and this also includes the virtual networks that use the 3 network. Once the SIM is installed, we're going to do a quick test to check it makes a connection. Now on this unit, you have indicator lights that when they go steady for mobile signal and GPS satellite, it shows that it's got a connection. The first time you boot up the tracker, it may take some time with a clear view of the sky for the GPS to connect. On this unit, the button on the side switches off the indicator lights but leaves the tracker active to make it more discreet. Then it's just the case of sealing up the tracker before finding a location to store it in the vehicle and connect it to a permanently live supply. I carried out a quick test just to see how much current the device would draw and once it had booted up and gone through its process it levelled out at around 0.04 amps. The simplest way to check the location of the vehicle is to send a text message to the device and it returns a link to a Google map and the location coordinates. Using the app with the tracker gives you a better experience being able to live track and also recall the history of where the vehicle has been. Within the app you can also set notifications for certain activities like the device going offline or the breaking of a geofence that you have set a location for.
you can also live track the device or view the history on any computer browser. So should you fit a tracker? Well just remember there is no way the tracker will ensure your van is always going to be recovered. Be sure to have other anti-theft deterrents, consider the cost versus the peace of mind you will get for it and the cost that there's a percentage of your van or build. Don't forget if you want to hear of other ways to keep safe while on the road you can check out our other videos here.